You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Thanks for joining me here today on this Wellness and Weight Loss Wednesday, where I want to take a little bit of a step back. What I want to do today is explain to you whether your goal is anti-aging, whether it's weight loss, or an overall wellness-based plan, how to do that how to literally take back control of your overall health, body, and mind. And I honestly believe after working for so long in this field that what all of us need are a complete program, some type of outline, not only to get us well, to help us lose the weight or transform our body and to work on anti-aging, but what do we do when we've also achieved that goal? So at some point, whether you're struggling with Hashimoto's, or rheumatoid arthritis, or chronic fatigue, myalgic encephalomyelitis, you have skin rashes, psoriasis, migraines, or you're trying to lose 20, 30 pounds, or 100 pounds, you will eventually reach your goal. There's no doubt in my mind. I have not met anyone who can achieve their goal to this day. I'm not saying that we work on curing cancer. That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that we work on a specific disease. But I can tell you, the people that we see in our practice the labs that we see, people get better. Now, they are committed to working on themselves, and that's a huge part of it, but there's so many people out there right now, they don't know where to start. And so what I want to give you today is, again, you're going to achieve your goal. There's simply no doubt in my mind right now. Choose your goal. Listen to the Motivation and Mindset Mondays. Choose what it is that you want to accomplish, whether it's any part of your life. But let's focus right now today on wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging. Okay. And anti-aging might be, well, my, my hair's thinning, my skin's getting drier and thinner. I'm losing muscle mass, losing bone mass, any one of those, but choose a goal. Now you can achieve that. And I want to go through all of that today. So first thing, take out of your mind that there is a possibility that you may not achieve your goal. You will. I'm going to teach you how to do it today. I'm not going to give you the exact practitioner seek out but I'm going to tell you how to find that practitioner, how to find the book, the system, the program. Because for me, what I want to provide you with on this podcast is unbiased information that I know will get you to your goal. Now, will it happen tomorrow? Well, that's kind of the issue, right? So I do a lot of interviews. I do a lot of podcasts. And I talk about why am I able to work with someone for three months or four months in order to get them to that goal when things are tough with them the first couple weeks and they're going through a lot the first four weeks. So they're doing this detox or whatever it might be. And simply because this, I've already been there. I understand where they're at in their mind and in their body. And I know how frustrating it is and it can be. So we start to get a little bit better, and then all of a sudden, there's a little relapse. So we start to go backwards a little bit. We can't figure out why we bloated today. Why do we add a pound? Why do we have a headache today? Why are my eyes itchy today? It's like one of those things. And we have to then work the process. We understand that getting to your goals is not completely linear. We can't just draw a line from A to Z. We need to work the process, and it looks like a zigzag. And that's the thing is like I just realized that it took me way longer than it should take anyone to get well. But keep in mind, I was trying to get well before the internet really existed. So in the late 90s, I'm trying to get well. I can't get well because I have to read books. I have to literally go to my library as a senior in high school and check out books using a library card, which is hilarious, right? And so now you go on Google and you're like, oh, let me just type this in. Now, the difference is this. It was to my benefit 
because I would not be where I am today without reading books. We can all read quick articles on how to get to our goals, but it doesn't go deep enough. That's why I'm going to talk about that today. That's a big part of this. But the other part is this. It was not a benefit because it took so long to even find out what to do. So I didn't even know about natural health in 1996. I didn't know what that was. Nobody really did. It was like this underground thing of naturopathy and functional medicine and you know even acupuncture. You're telling me people were doing a lot of acupuncture in the 90s? Not a lot. Not a lot. Was it there? Absolutely. People were doing yoga and Reiki and other things like that, but it was just less. It's been an absolute surge over the past decade. And I'll even give it since like the early 2000s. That's when it started. I mean, there was no such thing as functional training for personal training before really the year 2000, a little bit in the late 90s. So remember, there's always a time that it takes in general culture to begin to awaken to new modalities. We call them new, but they've been around what? 6,000 years, right? With Ayurveda, 3,000 plus years with traditional Chinese medicine, many thousands of years with what we call Native American medicine or herbalism from the US. Uh, but I mean, these, these things have been around for a while. But they take a while for the language to be updated in a way that people from the West can understand. We can also back it up by science because that's what we understand. It's a very closed-minded mindset. And I try to open that up with things like the integrative health practitioner program with explaining Eastern-based philosophy, with explaining how these things come into being and why they work so well. And you know, people ask me, like, are you going to have to go back and update you know, your podcast from the first 100? And I say, no, because I don't do any fads. I don't do any fads. So now you see people with a keto-based diet coming around finally saying, oh yeah, you shouldn't be doing this year round. You should be doing it cyclically. Maybe once a year, twice a year. They're backtracking. You'll start to see this. You will never see that with the Cabral concepts because we don't put anybody's health or well-being at risk. We do things that are based on modern day science, but honestly, backed up by thousands of years of natural science with Ayurveda and all of the other Eastern-based medical practices. And you can't say that they're outdated. They're not outdated. When I was in India, and I'm going back hopefully in the next year or two to do some filming and a lot of other things, is that we had representatives from many of the top pharmaceutical companies over in the Himalayas where I was, one of the locations I've been all over India, studying and talking with the Vages there, of what are you using, which herb? And they go back and then they try to extract the herb, patent it, and that's where they turn into a pharmaceutical. Well, we already have the herbs that work. We don't need the pharmaceutical. I'm not against pharmaceuticals in short-term acute instances to save lives. Of course not. Why would I be against that? Because I'm against, I'm pro-people. I'm about helping people. But I'm not profits over people, right? So I'll never do anything in my practice, any of my companies, that would ever do anything to put profits above people. It's never going to happen because I like to sleep at night. You know, <laughs> and I sleep really well because I know that I spend probably the most amount of money on product development out of any company out there. And I was doing third-party tested and I'm doing third-party testing before anybody even asks about it. We just do it because it's the right thing to do. And I put these supplements in my body and my two daughters use them and my family uses them. So that's the way that it has to be. All right, I could go on and rant about this all day, But that's why I keep a timer on my recorder so that I know that I have to now pull it back into what we want to talk about today. And that's this. And all of that led up to this because it does matter. I sat down with my team just this week and I said, I want to do a better job of explaining what we do as a global functional medicine and integrative health practice online with Equilibrium Nutrition. What is it that we do? Well, what we do is we help people take back control of their own health in mind and body. That's what we do. And we do that by achieving equilibrium. There's a reason why I chose that name. I chose the name based on many dozens of books I read from the original naturopathic doctors called natural hygienists. A lot of naturopathic doctors to this day don't know that the origins of naturopathic medicine come from the natural hygienists. 
And we can never forget that because of what they did. And I wrote about that in the, the rain barrel effect. I teach their principles, right? So here's the thing, though. It's great that we have now the lab test to back that up. And that, that's where we're going. So you have to understand, and this is what I've been explaining. The first step, there's five steps. There's five parts to how you're going to get well. And again, I want to, I'm just going to say it once, and then I'm not going to say it again for the rest of the podcast, because I always feel like I have to explain myself. And I hope that I don't, if you've been a long-time listener, but it, let's say this is your first podcast. Whatever I recommend, you don't have to ever purchase through equilibriumnutrition.com, any of my websites, any of my companies, anybody I ever talk about. That's not the thing. What I do is I open source it. So people are trying to copy my protocols right now, but it's never exactly the same. Right, But I open source it. I say to people, listen, I put all the ingredients up there. I put all the labels up there. I tell you how to do it. You can do it however you want. But what I can do is I can guarantee the work that we do in my private practice in equilibriumnutrition.com, which is our global functional medicine integrative health practice. Right, We are getting people labs in 19 countries around the world. And we're excited to say we're the first people to do that. I just had the vision to make it happen. But it's my team, not me, that makes it happen. They're the ones that get all the credit. Okay. So here's the first step, though. The first step for you achieving all of your goals is what I explained for the first few minutes of this podcast. And that's this. You need the education. You need literally to know that it's possible. Right? So I did not know that you could overcome Addison's disease myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is basically living with flu-like symptoms, your joints ache, total brain fog, You're, you can't walk up a flight of stairs. I had POTS, I had type 2 diabetes, I had rheumatoid arthritis, I had fibromyalgia, terrible migraines and allergies. I could go on. But I didn't know any of those were curable. Here's why. Conventional medicine today doesn't know that you can fix those things. They give you pharmaceutical drugs to mask the symptoms that they consider curing it. I don't know if they consider curing it, but they consider at least managing the disease. That's what I was told I would have to do for my entire life. You need to manage this disease. So if you're Addison's disease, we're going to give you Cortep. Take some in the morning, take some at lunch. For your POTS, which is your lightheadedness, your brain fog, you feel like you're totally weak, you can't even make a fist, your muscles are so weak. Oh, here's some uh, Flornif, right? We're going to raise your blood pressure with it, some sodium retention, et cetera, et cetera. For type 2 diabetes, you can do this, this, and this. And the list goes on, right? So that's what I knew. Eventually, I was given information that there is another way. They called it alternative medicine back then, which to me, it still feels like it's like second place, right? Oh, it's the alternative. Well, technically, it's not the alternative. Technically, it is the only form of natural medicine that will help you rebalance your body so that you no longer have the symptoms of ill health that we call disease. So there is no alternative to alternative health if you truly want to give get well. And I'm not saying it happens overnight. And I'm not saying to stop your medication. I'm not, I'm not saying that and I will never say that. I'm also not saying that you're curing disease or treating disease in any way. What I'm saying is I don't believe in the disease model. When you have rheumatoid arthritis, I don't deny that the smaller joints in your knuckles and hands and other parts of your body start to become broken down because of an immune process attacking those joints. What I'm saying is why. My job is to ask why. And I come up with the reasons why this is happening. So do I believe in rheumatoid arthritis? Not really as a name. What I believe in is the symptoms that's happening in the body. I don't let it come up with a name that we can then medicate it for. I look at the deeper level of why. What's going on with the body in terms of gut-based permeability? Parasites, SIBO, candida, H. pylori, food sensitivities, etc. Same thing with Hashimoto's. Same with MS. We see this all the time. But those are names. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is a name. A man's name is Hashimoto. He discovered, I have that in air quotes right now, thyroiditis, 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 inflammation of the thyroid caused by an autoimmune process that we see with elevated 
antibody levels, TPO antibodies, as well as others. Well, okay. All you're telling me is that there's an immune imbalance. Why isn't anyone in conventional medicine asking, why is there an immune imbalance? Well, because there's pharmaceutical drugs that you can give someone to weaken their immune system so they no longer have that attacking of the thyroid. The problem is, when you weaken the immune system, there's other diseases that can set in. That's why it's never the answer. So the first step to transforming your health in mind and body, because don't tell me when someone's sick in their body, it's not starting to affect their thought process in their brain. When you're in pain or when you have no energy, trust me, you're not in a good mood. It's very difficult. It takes a lot of willpower to try to be in a good mood. And I know that from personal experience. All through my late teenage years and in my early 20s, I was riddled with disease. I made the best of it as best as I could. But I'll tell you what, I was not a happy camper. I was angry. I had a bad temper. Not a happy person. Today, tough to rattle me. Pretty even-tempered. Pretty relaxed and chill for the most part. I'm intense in terms of my work, but I'm doing it because like, I'm doing it with passion and, and love. It has nothing to do with anger. There's no anger here at all. Even when I'm saying like to my team, like we need to do this, this, and this, it's because I'm so excited for what we are creating. It's a blank slate. That gets me excited. I push forward. But I mean, literally, it's all fun right now. That's it. Even on a bad day, I can look back and be like, yeah, but <laughs> look where I was before. And that's where I want to get you. After the first step, the first step is education, okay? So we need education to even know that there is a possibility. So if you're trying to lose weight, there's the possibility of getting connected with a great personal trainer who also does nutrition in your local town that you can meet with once or twice or three times a week for 12 weeks. That's a possibility. If you're dealing with all sorts of back pain and back problems is connecting with a good chiropractor who doesn't just do adjustments, but she or he does soft tissue work. They do postural analysis. They have you on a program to also meet then with maybe a, a, a PT or a musculotherapist or a personal trainer to work on certain movements to open up your hips or open up your, well, hip flexors or hip extensors to strengthen certain muscles, right? All of that's doable. Anybody with lower back pain, you can overcome that. You might not think that you can, but it's only because, you, again, you don't have the education. So step two is this. Step two is you find the source of that problem. Now, you do that with a really good online questionnaire, a book, a system or format that you can follow. They can tease out what your underlying root cause is. We use lab testing, okay? And again, you can do that with an integrative health practitioner, a functional medicine doctor, a naturopathic doctor. Your MD is not going to do this type of work unless they're also a good functional medicine doctor. And remember, who you have reading those labs matters. I'm going to explain that in my third step. So number two is this. So you've already asked the why, but now you need to find out the why. So let's go back to Hashimoto's. You have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which means your immune system is attacking your thyroid, which is then leading to lower body temperature, poor circulation, lower mood, brain fog, weight gain, thinning hair, drier skin, like all of these issues, right? Okay. So we say, well, why is all of this happening? You say, okay, it's Hashimoto. Okay, great. You got the diagnosis, but why? Why? So now's the time beyond running the thyroid numbers to run your cortisol levels, to run your vitamin D, and to run an organic acids test to figure out what's going on with your gut. I mean, I would love you to run the big five. Look at what's going on with your omega-6 to omega-3. If you have parasites or H. pylori, if you have food sensitivities like gluten or dairy or egg, which is super common, especially in people with Hashimoto's. So when you solve this second step with an at-home lab test, or again, you go to the chiropractor and you have a head-to-toe postural analysis of how your body's moving, they have you walk, they look at your gait, or you go to a personal trainer and they give you the nutrition, like they give you the plan, right? Well, that's actually number, I'm going to move now to step three. So step three is the protocol. First, you need the why. Okay, someone with Hashimoto's, they come in and we see like right there, sensitivity to gluten, sensitivity to cow's milk, sensitivity to eggs, sensitivity to almonds, sensitivity to cranberries. Okay, 
Well, now we know. Those are your five food sensitivities. Will they be there forever? Probably not. But we, do, we are going to eliminate them for a short period of time. Then we're going to try to ease them back in your diet. At the same time, we'll clean up the candida overgrowth that we found or the SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, anything that's causing some type of gut permeability because we know that 90% of all autoimmune issues have gut permeability, increased intestinal permeability or leaky gut as part of its hallmark, part of its foundation for why it's happening in the first place. Okay. So now we need to be given a protocol that works. This is where the practitioner comes in. Your personal trainer must have already gotten people results for people like you. That matters. Chiropractor, same thing. Acupuncture, same thing. Massage therapist, muscular therapist, integrative health practitioner, doctor, etc. Make sure you get a program that you know you're not the very first person that's gone through. That's it, right? That's it. Now your job is to follow that protocol. That's step three. Don't make up your own. We have so many people that, that write in saying, oh, you know, I was, I was going to do the protocol, but I decided to add a little bit of this and a little bit of that, change this and change that. Trust me, whoever you hired or whatever book you're reading or whatever system you're following, they're the expert. Please allow them to be the expert. Honestly, allow them to be the expert. Because you'll never know if you don't follow the plan. So if you don't listen to your personal trainer's advice, who's also a specialist in nutrition, you're not going to know if it would ever worked or not if you make it your own. Follow their plan. Because here's why. That practitioner has probably done it a thousand times or more before. Which means this. They already know if it's not working at some point, the minor tweaks to make. That's it. But you need to follow the plan. So step three is you need a protocol that's already been done. And again, look for this wherever you feel it's the right one for you. Okay. So for us, we find there's gut issues with a stool test, food sensitivity test, organic acids test. We'll use something like the parasite protocol or the CBO protocol, the candida bacterial overgrowth protocol. We will use whatever we need to in order to help this person's gut, right? So we'll fix that. If there's low iodine, if there's low selenium, if there's low anything with thyroid, we'll use daily thyroid support. If there's poor sleep at night to shut down high cortisol at night, we'll do something like the deep sleep protocol with it. So we, again, there's protocols that go along with it. Now, let me bring that up at the end. I'll bring up one more point at the end of how you can kind of skip places if you want. Now, step four is this. Step four is tracking. So this is where it gets good. On a weekly, bi-monthly, whatever basis you want to track, you will find out if the program's working. This is the fun part, right? So if you do a 21-day detox, if your goal is weight loss, you should see 5, 10, 15 pounds of weight loss, right? You get to track that. How are you feeling? Are your food sensitivities less? Do you form more even blood sugar? Like, again, you get to track those things. Weight loss is an easy one to look at. In terms of wellness, you're waiting at least three weeks, but you're saying, oh, yeah, I'm starting to feel a little bit better a little bit less inflammation. You write down those symptoms in the beginning. That's your tracking. Retesting. It's totally up to the person. But if you want to see if your H. pylori is gone or your parasite's gone, you can retest 12 weeks later. It gives you the option to say, I did it or I didn't. I love binary data, meaning that it's a yes or no. Did we clean up the gut? Yes or no. Is the candida gone? Yes or no. That's what I like. Are vitamin levels back up? Yes or no? Are your B vitamins where they need to be? Because they do. Your B vitamins need to be up there for thyroid, for adrenals, for stress in general, for sleep. And if they are, great. We can see that. So I like to retest or move on to the next test. Because remember, again, I'm a 17... Well, actually, I didn't get to see an alternative doctor until I was 19. But when I walked in at 19, I couldn't run every lab test first. And the doctor knew that. We didn't have the money to be able to do that. But we ran the adrenal hormone test that I still do today. And we ran a food sensitivity test. Okay? Once I got that data, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. A few months later, we ran a stool test. We didn't do organic acids testing back then. And I got to see that data with H. pylori. So again, you can add on. You don't always have to retest. You should have that option. Look, explore other things within your body. Do an omega-3 test if you want. Whatever works for you, because I can't tell you what works for you. I can guide you in that direction. 
with my chiropractor example. After a month of working with that chiropractor, six weeks, should be feeling a whole lot better. But also, they'll have before and after photos of, is your left shoulder still elevated above your right? How far forward is your chin behind, over in front of your shoulders? Call that cervical flexion, right? What's your anterior pelvic tilt look like? Like how far forward are your hips tilted, which is causing some of that tight lower back pain because it's pulling on those lower back muscles. So you can actually see that data. Talk about that all the time. Weight loss, again, is the easiest example. If your goal is to lose weight, again, we don't want fast results that you're never going to keep. But we say if you're on a healthy program and your goal is 10 pounds, you should be able to lose 10 pounds in your first four weeks. Everybody should be able to do that. So did we accomplish that goal? Yes or no? Like that's, I mean, that's it. So we have data and we can retest, whatever it might be. Body fat percentage, waist hip ratio. I've been talking about that a lot in the last couple of weeks on the uh, previous podcast. So check that out. Now, the fifth step is this. Fifth step is this. You need to maintain your results. And this is where people start to lose it a little bit. And I did as well, which is why I relapsed many times. I never fit into a system that I could eventually maintain for life. And I'm going to be honest with you. This is a little bit tricky. You want to go back to a lot of your old vices and ways of living because it was enjoyable. You want to be able to sneak a cookie or a muffin, you know, every day or so, every couple of days maybe, right? You want to be able to drink a glass of wine each night. I mean, I'm no different and my clients are no different. Like you just kind of let these things want to sneak in there. The problem is this, it doesn't happen right away. That's how the body works, right? It's called the rain barrel effect. Slowly over time, some people days, some people weeks, some people months, the symptoms start to creep back. And you say, I thought I got rid of this disease. Well, you forgot that a disease is just a collection of symptoms. And you forgot, because we all do, that symptoms only come about as you begin to overflow that rain barrel. So we start to feel good. After we get back on the diet, oh, and then we slide back off. We don't feel as well anymore. So here's the thing. What we need to do is create a system, get ourselves well, and then create a system that allows us to maintain our results while also enjoying those things in life that we enjoy. And I feel like at this time in my life, it's been a few years now, I've created a system. I know how much sleep I need to get. Not less than seven and a half hours. That, that's what I need to get. Now, is there a day a week I might get seven? Yes, but I'll always, I'm going to make up for it. I'm going to get eight the next night, okay? So I get about seven and a half to eight. I strive for eight, seven and a half is the goal, right? Every morning, what do I need? Hydrate my body. Get every nutrient I need in that smoothie, right? My daily nutritional support smoothie is everything I need. Put it all in there. Do my daily fruit and vegetable blend. I just get every nutrient I need. Here's the reason why I do that too. One, it's fast, it's easy, it's mindless. A lot of people say, well, I want to do fresh this and fresh that in my freezer. I mean, in my refrigerator, great. But honestly, I am super busy. I know that you are as well. I want to always have the, the items that I want right, ready to go. Most of what I put in that smoothie is frozen. It really is. And yes, I'm losing some of the enzymes, but I'm still getting a lot of those vitamins and minerals. And I'm getting the fiber. And I'm getting the plant-based antioxidants. So I'm okay. I'm okay with some compromise. That works for me. That works for me. Other people might be purists and say, well, I need only fresh fruit in season and local. And I need to handpick the apple myself. You know, like however level you want to take to, which is great. But that's, I can't get obsessive about it because it's not good for my mind either. So I figured out a way to, to maintain it. And I do our foundational level protocol three. That's what I do. It's simple. Do I do add-ons with vitamin C and other things as well? Sure. But what I do is I just slide into it. My workout routine, I mentioned this on a, a last Thursday podcast, but I have my workout set, my schedule set. It's an appointment. I made an appointment with myself in my schedule and I need to keep my appointment to get to the gym. So that's what I do. So uh, what I'm trying to say to you is that I could never come up with your schedule either, but I literally know I get two cheat meals a week. Now in the beginning, I recommend people start with one. Make sure you don't slide. I get two a week, right? One is just usually smaller. That's my, uh, just smaller, like something that I want. Okay, that's one. And it's never back-to-back days. But then I do one big cheat meal. You know, it's big. Sometimes a little embarrassing. 
but it's a big cheat meal. I get everything that I want out of my system. It's, it's not that crazy, but it, it's cr- crazy c- compared to you know how I'm t- like, typically eating. And that's my enjoyment. That's what I get. If I want dessert, fine, it's dessert. If I want pasta, then it's pasta. If I want bread in there, it's bread. That's it. That's it. And I enjoy it thoroughly, and that's it. That's what's built in my schedule, and I won't slide backwards because of it. So what I need you to do is create your maintenance-based program afterwards because you can't be exercising, you can't be eating well, and expect to maintain the weight loss if you're not continuing to do that. You don't get to keep it. You keep it based on the work that you were putting in. And that's also why I, don't, I recommend you should not crush your body in order to achieve a goal because that's not maintainable. You can't, I don't even know if that's a word, but you can't sustain that. All right, that's really important. So let me summarize and go through it with you right now. First is educate. Understand that whatever it is that you want to achieve has already been achieved by somebody else just like you. Not kind of like you, but just like you. It's out there. Find the program. The second is lab test or test to see where you're at today. What's imbalanced? Body fat percentage, waist to hip ratio, spinal biomechanical deviations, soft tissue, hormone lab test, gut lab test, food sensitivity, et cetera, right? Lab test or just test. That's test, number two. Number three is this. Realize that there is a protocol that will help you get well again, will help you lose the weight, and will help you live longer, stronger. Implement the protocol based on your results of step two. Number three is this. Retest to make sure you're making progress after six, 12, 18 weeks, whatever it might be. Make sure you're on base, that you are making progress, okay? Or move on to the next lab. Build off of it. It's one more rung on the ladder. That's how I look at it. It's like, I tell people all the time, listen, we're going to help you lose the weight. Then we're going to work on if there's any left wellness. Then we're going to go on anti-aging. We can do DNA after that. You don't need to do your DNA right away. And I'm telling you people, I'm telling you, I say it over and over. You don't need to do, if you have an MTHFR gene mutation, believe me, we're going to take care of it without you knowing that or not. We're going to give you all the methylated B vitamins. We're going to work on phase one, phase two detox. We're going to give you the antioxidants. We're going to give you the plant-based foods that you need. Trust me, taken care of. Save your money on the DNA test for when you're already well. You don't need that right away. They didn't need it 6,000 years ago in Ayurveda. You don't need it today. Now, it's amazing to have. Trust me. I've run DNA in all my kids and myself, my wife. Great. Wait till you're well. Invest the money in getting well. Then work on the anti-aging, which is the DNA. Okay. Then the last part is this. Maintain. Maintain. Don't do what I did with relapse multiple, multiple times. I'm a slow learner. I'm a hard learner when it comes to maintaining those results of what you want. And all through my early 20s, I thought that I could beat the system. I could do this. I could do that. No. You need to follow the system of what works for you, your body, and overall living a healthy lifestyle. So that's what I want for you. Now, I did say this, that I would give you one other way. If you can't afford lab testing, if you can't afford getting a personal trainer, if you can't afford any of these things, what you can do is begin to implement the protocols. You can move to step number three. That means you can purchase an online personal training program, right? From the personal trainer that you might not be able to afford to work with one-on-one. You can read something like the rain barrel effect and begin to put into play some of those protocols. So again, like there are ways for you to begin a protocol based on what you believe you do have. That's okay. You can definitely do that, right? And then maybe you can retest after that. And if not, get your results through a protocol. Say, I'm doing pretty well. Maybe I'll lab test in the future. Let me now maintain. There has to be a maintenance-based program. So that will allow everyone, no matter where you're at, in my opinion, in life, based on finances, based on kind of mental commitment, all of these things, in order to get the results you want. I hope this was helpful today. I will definitely do follow-ups on this. I'm happy to answer questions, but I did want to explain to you kind of the process that I think about from an ideal world perspective of how everyone, and that includes you, how everyone is able to get the results that they want in life. Take care, everyone. If this podcast was helpful, please, as always, do feel free to share it with someone else that you feel it could serve. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. 
As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.